Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you tuning in. Because in this video, we are going to take a close look at a very cool piece of technology. Because it's time for one of my favorite brands that you can pick up from China. This is Pao Kitty. Yep, Pao Kitty. I've reviewed so many of these freaking devices. And I must say, sometimes they really surprise me. Okay, so here in the box, it's quite interesting. You can see the Max and the Max 2, because this is the Pow Kitty Max 2. And it also comes in different colors. And I want to understand of making this video, they even released some new colors. But the only thing what I have with Pow Kitty is like, I cannot really figure out if they are releasing or developing so many different handhelds, or are they just developing handhelds and slapping labels? Because this device, in my opinion, is quite nice. I got myself the white edition. You already mentioned like you got different colors like the previous model, and they did some minor improvements, not with the hardware, because nowadays we're going to get a lot of similarities when it comes to handhelds. But this one, I was very positive when I was testing it, simply because of the curves and the way how you hold it. So Pow Kitty, it's a miss or hit or miss with these devices because sometimes you're going to get an amazing piece of hardware and sometimes you're going to get like really crappy stuff. And yeah, for the people who have seen my videos here, I've reviewed a lot of Pow Kitty products and sometimes it's like surprisingly good and sometimes it's freaking awful. It comes with the Type-C cable, a very long, nice one. And of course the toilet paper manual because this makes no sense whatsoever. So when it comes to these handhelds, they are mostly like, of most of the time they are like ready to set up. And I mean with this, it comes with some pre firmware installed so you only need to add your files and play some games. So when it comes to the Pow Kitty handhelds, I must say like they always surprise me sometimes with some of these devices. So first of all, this new Max 2 edition was quite a surprise that it came on the market. To be honest, I was thinking, why didn't you do that the first time? Because yeah, there's like a hit or miss, they like release handhelds. I'm having this idea that they watch like the videos, they look at the feedback of the people and just try to like give it a minor upgrade. And with minor upgrade, it's like purely cosmetic because they didn't do a lot when it comes to the inside. You see the battery comes with a 4200 million battery and yeah the RGB 10 Max 2 does have some minor upgrades when it comes to the buttons. So to begin with let's check the shoulder buttons because here we're going to get some minor differences. What I do like about it we're going to get this clicky button and we're going to get more like a membrane edition over here that has quite a short travel but when you're holding it it is quite nice. It's not the best shoulder buttons I have seen before because of the size and my big hands but if you have like smaller hands the they can be very comfortable. So we're here going to get a lot of options when it comes to the top. They're going to get a volume control, then we're going to get two Type-C. We're having a headphone jack out. We even have the option to turn the Wi-Fi on and off. We have an on and off switch and the reset button, if I'm saying it correctly. So then we're going to get at the bottom, we're going to get the speakers over here. And yeah, that's it. Like there was nothing a lot to see over here at the side. And of course at the front we're going to get the d-pad i'm very glad they made the choice to put it over here because i'm mostly using the d-pad the d-pad itself feels very comfortable got a very nice touch to it and of course we're going to get the nintendo switch clicky's joystick so they improved a lot in over the years we're going to get a b x y then we're going to get some extra buttons over here select and start so that is obviously if you're looking at that like the layout and everything it is not bad at all it's a very nice but when you're looking at the bottom they completely messed it up if you ask me. Why is that? Because you can see there was an option for two speakers, but you're only going to get one of them. And when you're listening to the audio quality, you can hear like it struggles with the one speaker. I didn't even put it on 100% volume. If I just added the second one, you're going to get like the great stereo sound and it would be like in such a better experience. Okay, so my version comes with MU Alec, but take consideration there are a lot of different versions out there nowadays. Like when you're looking at my good friend, the Retro Game Core channel, he made a lot of updates about certain headhands, like how you need to upgrade them, and also like what kind of software versions are out there, because we can do a lot of tweaking, modifying if you want to. But let's take a close look at the device itself out of the box with the MU Alec side. Another thing they change out is of course the panels that we're going to get inside of these handhelds. The price are going up, but also the quality goes up, and one of the great ways to show you is of course the display itself. The display is a beautiful display, especially when you're holding it in front of the camera, you can see how colorful it is. And that is something that Pau Kitty does a great job with. Even with the cheaper handheld, we have seen it before, that we're going to get a lot of, like say, better panels. 
Of course, we're going to get here the indication of the battery. If you're pressing the start with ME Alec, we can do a lot of tinkering if you want to like have some problems with some of these things or with the games of the emulators. So when it comes to supportive, like when you're looking at the old stuff, the 8-bit, 16-bit, that runs pretty damn good. Only when you're going to get into, let's say, the second Dreamcast and the higher end stuff, then we're going to get some limitations. But in general, the rock chip that is inside this machine is absolutely not bad at all. And what I find really cool with these handhelds nowadays, we even have like Sinclair ZX Spectrum if you're like into the stuff like that. Of course, PlayStation Portable and PlayStation 1 are represented, but PlayStation 1 is running just fine. But Sony PlayStation Portable is still like a device that is very, like, really demanding. And we still need a little bit of more juice if you want to run every single game and even on higher resolutions. It's time for the wicked nerdy time. So this is the POW Kitty, the RGB 10 Max 2. And yep, so it comes with the Rock Chip 3326. There's a quad core Gore-Tex A35 with a GPU that is a Mali G31 MP2. So it has a five inch IPS display. Battery is around 4,200 milliamp, or better said, it is 4,200 milliamp, but it has around a playtime around six hours. Yeah. Okay guys, so the first game that I wanted to try out is PlayStation 1 with Bloody Roar 2. And the reason why is very simple, because this is a quite demanding game. And another thing I like, even despite they are using like widescreen displays, mostly like because there's like the common thing now, but you can see like the emulator push it back into original XPS ratio. The emulation performance nowadays on these devices is absolutely amazing when it comes to PlayStation 1. And you can see when the more demanding games I wouldn't say like you can upscale it to higher resolutions because yeah, that's to be honest, like then you're going to need a lot of power from the chip. But in overall performance, it's not bad at all. And it's very cool to see that we finally can like play a PlayStation 1 without any hassle. Especially when you're looking at the beginning of the handheld era. Okay, so next up, let's try some PlayStation Portable. Let's get into the more demanding stuff. So when you need to take consideration, like when you're going to perform some updates, different firmwares, it's highly possible that some games that have issues that will run very well. I also noticed in the settings, they already set the, to one skip or better said one frame skip. And I understand like some games like a Darius Boost don't have like a lot of troubles when it comes to emulating. But when you're going to like so you check out some different games, it's going to be highly possible that you're going to get some lag. So that's the reason why they set it up to one times resolution. Of course, if you want to mess around with it, you can always press the button over here. You can go to the settings and mess around over here. So if you want to tinker with it to see how far you can push a certain game, you can always do it over here. So that's pretty damn cool. You still have the option if you want to. All right, so I've been messing around with Nintendo 64, and this is a great example. Like, out of the box, the emulation performance is pretty damn messed up. But if you're going to tinker with some different firmwares, it's highly possible some of these games, especially like the launch games like Diddy Kong Racing, will run just fine to enjoy some old-school retro gaming. No idea where my button is. Oh, there it is. But I'm almost like, it's a little bit of a warmer and it happens a lot when it comes to these handhelds. So when you're buying it, especially when you're going to get it out of the box in the beginning, you always need to tinker with it and just mess around with it. Of course, you can also get into the RetroArch menu over here and go like tinkering here just to see if you can get yourself like better performance. But I just wanted to show you what happens sometimes when you're getting it out of the box. But take consideration, even if you're going to get some games running and you're going to mess around and tinker a lot, take consideration that you need to have a lot of power to get these games running, especially when it comes to 100% compatibility with N64. Well, with this new generation of devices, we do get the option to play some Sega Dreamcast. And I think that's pretty damn awesome. Yep, I know, like, it's going to be a mixed performance. Also, depending what kind of emulator you're running, what kind of server you're running. Out of the box, the performance is okay. Dead Alive 2 is just a really demanding game. But when you're getting to get some simple games, they will run just fine. So I think it's pretty damn awesome to see if we can bring the Sega Portable fairly easy with Empower Kitty Max 2 with you. But if you are, like, a big fan of arcade games like me, and when you want to play some Mortal Kombat, and I think that is just amazing. Like when you're having the cheap to the cheap cheap handheld, I've reviewed like a gazillion of these things on my channel. What I've noticed when you're getting to get into a device like this, you're going to get better performance, especially when games like this. So far I understand, Killing Resting stuff like that will not run, that is not part. You're just going to need a lot of juice inside the machine to get that running. But when you just want to let some experience some the Comet 1, 2 and 3, it is possible. 
Another thing I like about this device is that the D-pad itself is amazing. Ah, oh, crap. When you need to take consideration, when you're going to get into the handhelds, it's absolutely a jungle out there. They released so many of these devices out there with different kind of chips. And also like, if, oh man, you have so many different kind of firmware, software, and some of these handhelds just need a lot of tinkering. But in the end, what you're going to get out of the box is quite surprisingly good. I really love like the way this thing looks, but the only thing I don't like is the way how it sounds because I'm missing out basically one speaker. It's such a bummer because the speaker hole is inside the machine, but you cannot really use it. So when you're looking at the way how this thing feels, plays and how good of the quality of the screen, I'm very sad about with that. Yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of the RGB 10 Max 2? Is this something you would consider picking up? Well, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family and we'll see you in the next video.